NASA still needs to work on what seem to be never-ending issues despite spending a decade and more than $1 billion prepping the SSLS and mobile launch tower for the Artemis 1 mission. The SSLS still needs to be operational. The mobile launcher created in conjunction with it is a complete disaster that has cost millions of dollars in revisions and development expenditures. Welcome back to another exciting video from Informative Scoop. Today's video is about crash. NASA's launch tower faces big problems. SpaceX rises. Before we start the video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon. But why are there delays and never-ending issues? And what is NASA doing about it? The leading tower of NASA is ML-1. It took about a billion dollars to build and alter the ML-1, and when it was finished, NASA released alarming news. The tower tipped over. The movable launch structure was constructed to launch the massive SSLS Next Generation rocket into space. Its purpose was to facilitate space launch system testing and maintenance while giving the 355 feet tall rocket access to communications, power, fuel, and cooling. Even though NASA stated in a statement that the issue was not severe enough to warrant redesign or modification, more components would be added to the learning structure. They clarified that the leaning of the launch tower was normal for such a massive structure, and was probably caused by welding the several levels together and changing them one at a time. The alteration in structure to prevent the tower from tilting further was attributed to other natural forces, including wind temperature and vibration. The engineers will remove the tower's lightweight fiberglass G grating and replace it with heavier steel grating when additional installations are added. However, this modification will also add 750,000 pounds, or a million pounds, above the targeted amount, which may cause additional issues. This is not ideal for something that needs to be moved while carrying a large rocket. Even though it took a long time and was expensive, NASA needs another launch tower for a different version of the SLS that has a more potent upper stage to expand the rocket's height by 40 feet for future voyages. As a result, it will be replaced after three missions. But how could a specific change cost 54 million instead of 914 million? Moreover, a leaning tower that is only used three times. Oops, a crucial part of the ML, like the umbilicals, had to be modified due to NASA's late finalization of the SSLS and Orion requirements. Additionally, the agency needed a thorough procedure for integrating the work of several contractors into a single, unified design. They were removing themselves from the spotlight. NASA heavily criticized the Cost Plus agreement with Vinco, a business providing ground support equipment designs. However, NASA is partially faultless. While fully knowing that the subsystem designs were incomplete and required additional testing, the agency selected unproven designs from Bencorp to expedite the building and manufacture of contracts. They refused to be punished or criticized for their mistakes, even after they caused major delays and expensive rework. Even though the structure was behind schedule and significantly over budget, the staff at the Kennedy Space Center gave Vincorp excellent or very good ratings, stating that Vincorp did well due to the hurdles that had to be surmounted. This oversight on the part of NASA fueled the raging accusation that the SLS project was solely developed to increase employment rather than strengthen U.S. presence. The larger Block 1B SLS rocket will fit on the second mobile launcher that NASA is currently developing. The project was scheduled to be completed by 2023 with an estimated 383 million budget, but issues have already begun to arise. Building Method ML2 NASA insisted on developing a bigger and more capable rocket even though the present SLS rocket has yet to be launched or tested to the fullest extent possible, necessitating the creation of a new mobile launcher. 2020 saw the awarding of the new contract to Betzville National. The ML2's design work still needs to be completed. Neil Beale reportedly has difficulties and performance problems due to underestimating the project's complexity. What the heck happened there? The pandemic also significantly delayed the company's plans. NASA has already written to Beale to evaluate the project's dangers and to hurry up the projects that can be deployed as soon as possible. However, this does not entirely account for the delays. The ML2 project is already done. I am composing a critical report. According to NASA's Inspector General, the project is now years behind schedule before it even takes off. The launcher weighs too much, and its new cost of $960 million and millions of dollars higher than expected. For more than 20 Falcon missions, that is sufficient. They must do something other than abandon the initiative because the agency has already invested significant cash. According to Nelson, NASA is in a bind, but NASA once more doesn't exactly have clean hands. The space agency awarded the Belcher contract before the exploration upper stage parameters for the SLS were finalized. There also needed to be specifications for the second launch tower's design or the EUS pause. NASA is now taking action to review the project's budget, projected timetable, and contract. However, the tower will likely be ready for you until 2026 or 2028. Given NASA's lengthy history of unforeseen problems delaying launches, the agency has taken an unusual step by taking on some of Beale's duties while still covering all the costs. The development of the umbilicals will be handled by a different contractor and supplied to Beale for integration with the project, while Betch concentrates on the main undertaking. The ML2 is anticipated to have cost $1.5 billion more than its initial budget by that point. 
why Artemis is slow NASA plans to use the first mobile launcher to finish the first three flights of the Artemis program so that it will only need the ML-2 sometime soon. The agency intends to launch the first mission between November 16th and December 9th, although it's still being determined whether that will happen. After all, the SSLS flight is already five years behind schedule, and the rocket's launch attempts this year have all encountered difficulties. Due to fuel leakage, the SLS's first flight, which was scheduled for April, had to be cancelled. Teams were dispatched almost once to remedy the problem, a glitch prevented the August next launch from taking place. The launch controllers couldn't relax, one of the four major engines required to power the rocket. The fuel is extremely cold and is constructed of cryogenic liquid oxygen and hydrogen. The subsequent launch attempt failed once more in September. The launch was delayed until October because the engineers couldn't correct a hydrogen fuel leak in one of the rocket's engines. The agency stated that they would move slowly with the Artemis program because they wanted to get it right. But the question remains how slowly. The SLS has been in development for many years and has already cost $23 billion to construct because a new, improved version of the SLS is being built. Testing the one they currently have is the only way they can be certain of its capability for future work. It, NASA will have to look at two of the rocket's boosters that are set to expire in that period if the rocket is not flown by the middle of December. The Northrop grooming rocket boosters had a two-year shelf life, with the first expiring on December 9th and the second on December 14th, and their expiration dates cannot be changed. Without using them completely, NASA will have to replace the boosters and postpone the launch by months or years until new boosters are available. The timer for the Artemis 1 launch is running out quickly. NASA needs to act quickly to justify the years and billions spent on the project and launched effectively this year. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.